I recently picked up my first cyclone separator for the Ryobi shop back from Timbercon. It's the Sherwood one, budget model, but it is doing the job. However, there are a few little problems I'm going to have to overcome to make it work better for the situation that I have here. Let's test it out on this suspicious pile of crushed leaves and dust and see if you can figure out what I'm talking about. Yeah, that. So it is quite light. I've even got a brick in here trying to weigh it down to stop that, but it's going to need a bit of a solution. Also, when you're trying to move these two things around together, the cord extends, it contracts, and it's just very, very cumbersome. How are we going to solve both those problems? Cart. That's the project for today. Alrighty then, first thing of course is to pull all of this apart. Here's my lovely brick that I had in there weighing it down. Get out that little bit of dust and start pulling off the casters. Obviously you've got to get the wheels off both the cyclone bucket and the Ryobi shop vac. I'm going to reuse all of those later. So these wheels had tool holders on them. That'll come into play as we get towards the end. But first of all I need to plug the gaps that were left by the bolts from the casters in the bucket. A little bit of electrical tape down the bottom. Just so I can hold in some cellies all clear. Any sealer will do really. Clean it off with a bit of turps. And the bucket is pretty much ready to go. Easy as. Now, I wanted some weight because obviously weight was one of the problems that I was tackling. So 18mm MDF. Not really scrap, I said it was a scrap project, but uh, that's leftovers from when I built my cabinets up on the wall behind me there. The 18mm is very, very heavy, and it's going to give me the weight that I need to keep this stable. Around the sides, we're going to have 12mm ply. That was scrap, I got given that for free from some builders. And so here I am squaring up around the outside of the vac and bucket, and marking a 12mm gap so that we have a space for the wood. Obviously your dimensions are going to vary, but I love the Craig Rip Cut here because I can set it very, very accurately to the size that I want and make repeatable cuts. Obviously not repeatable for the base, but we'll see that in just a second. Back on the square cut, you'll notice I'm not using my table saw. I actually had to pull that apart because there are some big things coming for that in the near future. So we are back to basic tools. All right, now these are the 12 mil ply sides and I'm cutting the heights and I've just set the rip cut to just below the lip of the vacuum cleaner. The hardest part in all this actually was using scrap, was trying to get these boards square. I, I cut most of that out, but you can see here that rip cut just leaves them exactly the same height. These are the short sides for the box. Very, very quick, very, very repeatable. And finally, we can cut these down to the right length. Even though I made the table saw, the square cut for these sorts of things, still very, very handy tool to have, and I even built it at its own little home. Now you'd think that after over a year of using and singing about how good Craig Pocket Hole joinery is, that I'd be getting it right by now. However, even though they've designed their system to be nearly foolproof, once again on this project, I proved that I am the superior fool. Here we go with a little boo-boo. See where that drill guide's gone in? That is for a smaller screw than what I am intending to use. It'll become obvious in a few minutes. But otherwise, the setup is super quick and the compulsory montage of very fast pocket hole drilling. Those short sides are getting the vast majority of the holes. They're gonna screw into the long sides and into the base. The long sides only need the pocket holes pointing downwards to be screwed into that MDF. This was pretty rough stuff, quicksand to knock all that back. Okie dokie, assembly time, and I'm going to do something that Craig always says you should do, but I've never had the guts to try before. I'm ignoring the glue bottle. I'm just going to assemble this with screws, a little bit of an experiment because it is literally just a really crappy shop cart, and putting it together without anything but the Craig screws. So far so good with my glueless assembly. 
The 12 mil ones worked fine, joining up the sides together. I hadn't noticed any errors yet. This is where things started to go pear-shaped. First screw into the base and... Um, okay, remove screw. Stands there for probably three times as long as this thinking and swears when he realizes what the error was that I'd set that drill guide too deep, which means my screws are coming out the edge and are not perfectly positioned as they should be. Once again, not Craig's fault, my fault. Do be careful when setting up your jig. If it was anything other than a crappy shop project, that would have been a bit of a disaster. I'll just fix it up later on. So I've made those walls just high enough that I'll be able to cut some checkouts to position the vacuum. And of course the biggest one needs to be for the vacuum hose. So we'll quickly mark those off, grab the router, clamp the board to the side to give me some extra stability. And these little ones are just for the handles on the vacuum. That'll help position it correctly so it doesn't twist or turn when I'm pulling it around. Then we're gonna pull out a paint tin, mark off a semicircle for the jigsaw to cut out a slot for the hose. You'll also notice I've braced it with a bit of scrap two by four to hold up the sides while we're cutting that hole. I ended up actually having to make that quite a bit deeper as you'll see here. All right, that's my main construction basically done. Test fitting everything in to make sure that the hoses connect up neat. Looking good, all stable. I had cut that base a little bit proud as I usually like to do so I can come around and flush trim but because I knew I had those protruding screws too far out I've actually removed four of the five of them for this shot and you'll see I skipped that bit in the middle where the last screw was so that I could not destroy my expensive router bits flush trimming that down once I was done I could re-put the screws in and then I've just got the sanding disc on the angle grinder here, hiding my mistake by trimming off those screw ends. Everything is fixable. One last quick buzz with the sander to get rid of all of the sharp edges and corners. Now this is an interesting little bit that I actually got off Dave's shed. Uh, when he built his vacuum cart, I noticed that little dangly chain down the bottom of the vacuum, which I had no idea what it was for. Turns out it is a static disperser. So you're earthing your electrical buildup from the dust. So thanks for that tip, Dave. And hence I have had to carefully mark out and drill a hole with the Forstner bit through my bottom to accommodate the little static chain. Now to return some mobility. These are gonna be the casters I stole off the bucket, not the vacuum. The tape around the Forstner bit for the depth guide was not such a great idea, to be honest. It just clogged up the exit spouts on it. Ooh, there's a technical term, exit spouts. But it ended up working. I was able to countersink the nuts that are going inside. And then just use my ratcheting socket set to reinstall the casters. A couple of very, very simple braces just to keep things in position a little bit better, stop them from sliding around inside my box. And now this was the most challenging and unique part of the build. Those weird slots that you saw me mark on there are going to be for the casters off the Ryobi shop vac. You'll see a better picture of them later of why they needed to be that shape. The good thing is these friction fit, so I didn't have to damage the casters at all. And the reason I wanted them mounted on there is because, as we saw earlier, those casters are in fact the tool holders. And it was much easier to reuse the ones that I had than try and manufacture something. So there we go. See that keyhole? and they just pressure fit in. If I ever wanted to rebuild my vac as it was intended, I should be able to do that. Those wheels aren't gonna bother anyone. Oh yeah, there's some Pask Makes level of editing right there. Reassemble it all, and we are pretty much done. It is the simple projects that are often the most useful. Nothing terribly complicated here, but this thing is gonna be great. Only one thing left to do, put it to use and clean up this mess. Well, this project really sucked, had to do it, but it was very, very fun. It was quick, it was easy, it was cheap. And if you liked it, please do consider subscribing to Fix It Fingers to follow along with my antics every week. Give us a like, share it around, and I will see you on the next one.